Hi, Phil Nice here. Welcome to tutorial number five in my series on soloing. In the last tutorial we looked at free improvisation as opposed to guided improvisation, which is what we're going to look at now. And as I said in that tutorial, the reason why I chose to, uh, to focus on free improvisation first was because from the argument that um, if you're going to guide something, you have to have some kind of movement um, to be guided. There needs to be a content uh, before there can be a framework to contain um, or restrict that content. So before we get on to the, uh, the guidance question, what is it that's guiding the improvisation, um, I just want to reiterate this warning about uh, thinking of the framework as if it were, were the content. Um, and I will try to give you uh, an illustration of what I mean in this tutorial. Now, in the course of the next tutorials, I will be looking at different ways that improvisation can be guided. Um, amongst them, for example, uh, using a melody to guide your improvisation. Uh, that would be relevant in jazz standards, for, exam for example. Um, but in this particular tutorial, I'm going to look at the way that harmony can guide your improvisation. And we're going to start with a sequence that simply has uh, a single harmony. And here it comes. It's a it's a sequence built over C7. Single harmony, there are no changes. All you've got is C7 and it repeats as long as you want it to. Okay, so we can, and I don't see any harm in um, defining our framework here as uh, the mode or key of C mixolydian. Um, many would call that a, think of that as a scale, um, a mode. Okay, it's all the same thing. It means the same thing. Okay, now if you thought of uh, free, improvisation, free improvisation as anything goes, um, then you can see that this is a guideline because we've got a harmony that's keeping us um, in within a certain uh, sequence here, a certain defined area. Um, not anything will go here. There will be notes that uh, that are not very friendly to you over this harmony um, and on the other hand there are notes which will be uh, almost safe havens to come back to the, the safest of all safe havens here is going to be the tonic C you're going to be able to stay there um, it's not creating any tension of any kind pretty much the same thing with the third and the fifth and the seventh if we take something like the sixth not quite as much in harmony um, and there we're creating a, a tension, there's a tension that wants to push us back to one of the more safe notes um, and very much so the case with the, the fourth of the scale F uh, which is quite dissonant here we're feeling the, the weight pulling us back um, either towards the third as they did there or, or pulling us maybe towards the fifth or even right back back to the tonic again. So we've got a weighting of notes uh, right here. Now there's absolutely nothing wrong with this framework, um, these guidelines of knowing that these are our safe havens and this is where we can come back to, uh, knowing that this is the territory we're moving over, but the danger is to think of this as being the, uh, the content here. Um, and I'll illustrate why. And I could go on, this has really nothing at all um, to do with soloing. Um, but round and about you can hear people doing something like this and uh, they'll happily go on sometimes for five choruses. Um, and why is this nothing to do with soloing? Well, I like to talk in metaphors, as you've probably gathered by now. And I think, to my mind, this is the equivalent of walking into an art gallery and finding that there were no art, but there were only frames. Um, the frames are not the interesting thing. That's not why you go to the art gallery. If you walked into an art gallery and there were only frames with no content in them, you'd want your admission back. And that's pretty much what I feel like um, after about five choruses of hearing people uh, 
doing this over a, a Mixolydian scale or any other scale for that, for that matter. Now, one of the things that's wrong with it is that we actually have got more than just these seven notes of the scale. Uh, we've got everything in the octave in principle, uh, which I'll try to show you now. Okay, this time I made a point of using every single note in the chromatic scale and not just the seven notes of my Mixolydian scale. Uh, but you would notice that um, some of these notes, uh, these notes that are not in the Mixolydian scale, have a very, very small weighting. They are extremely dissonant, um, so you're certainly not going to be using them a lot. Um, they create enormous amounts of tension uh, and provide a contrast with your your safe havens. So now what if we took all of this as some kind of mathematical algorithm and said that well you know C and E and G and B flat they have a certain uh, weighting and then the other notes of the Mixolydian scale they have a sort of a slightly lesser weighting and then you've got the rest of the chromatics uh, things like D flat, G flat, A flat, maybe B um, not in the Mixolydian scale, uh, very small weighting, and you fed all of that into some kind of supercomputer, um, what would you come out with? Would you, would you get a soloing supercomputer? And I don't think so. I really don't believe that. I think that um, even the idea of having a constant weighting on any of these um, steps of the scale or any of these pitches um, is unrealistic because I don't even think that they would have the same weighting all the time. I think that it's a very much a question of what comes after what. Um, I think that you could lean on some of these dissonant notes and then redeem yourself later by being much more consonant on some of the safer notes. Um, and I think everything is really up uh, for grabs all the time. And that's before we've even brought in any changes. We're just on one chord and it's already that chaotic, that unpredictable that subjective so we're not dealing with something um, logical however intelligent your supercomputer is we're dealing with something in the realm of aesthetics um, that really cannot be pinned down in any other way than simply by attacking it uh, organically so the reason why I could solo with every note of the chromatic octave there was really because I took a quite different approach and this approach was the melodic approach. Now in a future tutorial um, I'll probably be talking at great length about um, what I think melody is but I'll spare you that right now um, and finish off here with uh, an illustration of how you can use a sequence like this starting out with what we did in the last tutorial which was doodling with the voice and free improvisation the only difference here is that it's going to be done over this background to this of uh, harmony to to guide you uh, so we're going to be feeling our way in the same way that we were doing in the beginning um, there will also be a couple of good tips in this um, for wind players who might have trouble actually articulating with their voice while they're playing their wind instrument so here's a couple of tips for you a little bit of uh, a, a guide and I'll just leave you with this <laughs> Boom, 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 boom.